Hey everyone, Bob here, HOA Ham. Tessman reached out to me recently and asked if I would do a review of their brand new multimeter. As far as I'm concerned, if you want to send me some free gear, it has application to the ham community and you're not going to dictate what I say, then I am happy to do a review. So let's get a quick look at the TM510. It's a sub $10 multimeter which tells us it's already in the budget range so if it's decent for ten dollars well that's a plus right there it comes in an okay case and when i mean okay for less than ten dollars for a multimeter that's a pretty good case we have our leads we have the multimeter and we have some duracell batteries that's a nice touch that we have some good quality brand name batteries let's get this out of the plastic bag and see what we think Right off the bat, I'm going to say it's incredibly lightweight and it's also incredibly small. So those would be two pluses from my perspective. This feels like that's a rubberized, yes, that's a rubberized cover. All right, so that's another plus, a nice rubberized cover to protect it. I'm not kidding, this thing is really light. So like all multimeters, we have a screw here in the back to put our batteries in. Would somebody please put in the comments below a reason as to why, oh why, multimeter manufacturers cannot put some type of tab that easily allows us to open the battery compartment. I don't understand this. Every multimeter I own has a screw to cover up the battery compartment. It doesn't matter how much I pay for the multimeter, that's standard. Why is that? There has to be a good reason for it. I'd love to be educated. So that's not a flaw. This is common amongst all multimeters, no matter how much you pay for them. The TM510 is a 4,000 counts smart measurement auto ranging multimeter. So I certainly like the auto part of it. That means we don't have to manually press a dial, a button to educate the multimeter on what it is that we're trying to measure. It has a non-contact voltage function. It measures AC, DC voltage, resistance, and continuity. So it's rather limited in its capabilities, or maybe the right word is basic. It has basic capabilities. And if your requirements are basic requirements, then a $10 multimeter might suit you just fine. Of course, you're not going to take this onto the International Space Station and do anything with it there because that's not quite the technical nature of this gear. It's not made for that. This is basic functionality, and that might be sufficient for you. So I heard a beep. Maybe you heard that beep. Yep, it came on automatically. Let's get rid of that screen protector. We don't need that anymore. And let's just see what we can measure with this. In addition to battery compartments that are screwed shut rather than with a quick release tab, my next biggest pet peeve with the multimeter would be the cables. How flexible are the cables? Do they have a lot of memory to them? Are they stiff? And I'm going to say from a non-memory, non-stiffness, if that's the right phrase, these are pretty good. I'm liking that very much. So let's just go ahead and plug them in. We're dealing with 120 volts here. So don't mess around folks. This is electricity, always safety first. And let's just see if we get what we expect to see in the multimeter. 120.7, 121. Yep, that's what we expect to see. I've confirmed all of this prior with my more expensive multimeter. Let's head on over to our BioNO battery and see if we get what we expect out of a LifePo battery. And sure enough, we do at 13.37. Let's check our continuity on this ground spike. So here's my radiator out of the BNC connector. This has a 3 8 by 24 female thread here. So this top portion is a radiator. And sure enough, we have continuity. We've got a verbal notification, uh, I should say audible, and we have a green light. So we are good to go. The multimeter does what it says it will do. Now, the other thing that it claims that it can do is provide a non-contact voltage measurement. So let's go ahead and pull that off. And let's see, I believe we press this button. Yep, that's the button we press. And let's see if it is indeed going to tell us that we have voltage. Look at that, <laughs> we have voltage. So let me give you my opinion of a non-contact voltage tester. They're good until they're not. And all I simply mean by this is you should use this as an indicator. 
at this point in time, if this were a wall outlet that you could dismantle, I would never dismantle and touch anything on the inside of this based on this alone. To me, this is an indicator. This is not a tool to tell you, you are good to go and start playing around with electricity because electricity is nothing to play with. Does it work? Well, yeah, we've just confirmed that it works. Would I open up a device and start messing with it before I went and checked with a different type of device and or went to the breaker box myself and confirmed that the breaker was off. This is an indicator and that doesn't matter whether this is a $10 device or a $100 device. If I'm using a non-contact device, I wanna use a contact device and make sure that my power is locked out so that I can safely work with the gear that I am working with, testing, improving, fixing. To round out the review, let's realize that we do have a light on the front of that screen to help us in low light conditions. And if we press and hold that button, we get a flashlight. And we all love flashlights on our low cost gear, a la UV5R. So would HOA Ham buy the Tessman multimeter? Well, many companies, when they're trying to break into a market, either offer compelling features or compelling price point. This multimeter is not going to set the world on fire for features. It offers the basic features. But if basic features are all you need, then it's the price point. And for sub $10, it's a pretty good price point. You get a decent user manual. You have a case to carry it around in. This unit does exactly what it says it can do. And many of us only need the basic functions that it provides. And then we have a pretty good quality probe wire set here. So if you're looking for a $10 or sub $10 multimeter that you can put in the back of the truck in the toolbox or in a go kit that you don't need the incredible functionality of a multi hundred dollar multimeter, this could be the gear for you. I'll leave a link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. Talk to you soon, friend. 73.